Actually, report of the Auditor General auditing the last financial year and audited this financial year. So when the Auditor General gave you a report, and in the report he, he said you had this money, in your own words, which you said was being paid to ghosts, why didn't you put it in the budget? Because at that time, the Auditor General said last financial year, after the audit, that uh, on the wage bill, there is a 125 billion which is, has been paid to ghosts. So you knew at the conclusion of last financial year that actually there was 125 billion saved as a result of the report of the Auditor General. Why is this money being brought now as if you, you have discovered it uh, last week? Yet the Auditor General gave you a report a report on the transactions of last financial year notifying you that this money is available and you didn't include it in the budget. Now at the end of the financial year, you are saying, no, 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 we have discovered last week there is this money, which you technically refused to put in the budget. I am just seeking clarification before yeah. I ask the question. Yes. Okay. Then, Chairman, the... Honorable Samuel, yes. Honorable Samuel, maybe before you lose. So it's possible that you have not recruited people because of that uh, moratorium, and then you are calling it savings at the expense of service delivery. So is that how government is going to operate, that you tell people don't recruit so that wages remain, then you call it a savings to reallocate it? Funds from a vote to another vote where the functions of a vote are transferred. So this money you are reallocating. Like I would take a microphone and say, Honorable Minister, is this, is this a political budget? Yes or no? He says yes or no. Then next question, this we proceed. Honorable Semunji is winding up. Let yeah, I am winding up, up, Chair. Thank you very much. And also it depends on the, the framing of the question. Yeah. Some are submissions. <laughs> to reallocate funds from a vote to another vote, where are the functions of the, the vote from which you are picking money, or who's that vote which is debt servicing? Are you also transferring, if I understood, the functions of debt servicing to Magora, where you are taking the money? Because that's what uh, Section 20 says, that you can only, Parliament can only authorize you to transfer money from one vote to another, but that transfer of the money goes together with the functions um, previously budgeted for. Under this section, are you transferring the debt servicing from Treasury Operations and the Minister of Finance to Magora? Um, if, if I understood this. Okay. Um, Next. It is uh, specifically for debt repayment. So transferring money from vote 130, which was meant uh, to redeem uh, to, uh, to redeem Bank of Uganda, to now, operational votes is normal. This one has no, because there is no function, there is no operational function which is being affected. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a service vote. Mm -hmm. So it could apply. Like if you remember, we moved the money from Minister of Science then to State House when the functions of Ministry of Science were transferred to State House. That is where this uh, provision would fit within your concerns. But so, movement from one vote to 130 to any other vote, this one uh, does not require a lot of details from the functions. So we can now, just say money was over budgeted there, so you do. You'd rather take it to solve problems yes. other than leaving it idle. Okay. Now, another issue is on the, the Auditor General's report. True, this report... I, I, I am sorry, but here you need, you need 
to help me understand. So you mean this vote has no function? So no. that uh, service it's, is not a function? It is a service vote. The it's, function, what we mean? That is semantic. Money was you, approved by, by... If if a colleague can refer me to any policy statement, if we do have a policy statement here, we show, we can demonstrate what vote function means using using a clear example. Because the function we are talking about, we are seeing when we are enacting colleagues, that law, colleagues, was this not... A, this is a clear matter. Money. Or you have... You, either it's over-budgeted. The third one, you may have, you may have changed the priorities mm. with the reason. Yes. Say so that you now hold some activity so that you take money to handle what is more important at, at that time. Mm. Is it something like that? Yes, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, so this one is not a transfer of function. No. But, mm. yes. What uh, obligation to, a, to future years. So, that, and I, I don't know why the minister can't say it clearly, because that's what it is, blatantly, that you are renegotiating the, uh, the redemption of the Bank of Uganda financing. Uh, by 2.2, deferring to future years. So you're allowing that resource which had been provided in the budget to be used for other activities that, that are in the supplementary. So I think that is very clear. Uh, what uh, is not clear to me is what are the implications of that deferment in terms of, um, in terms of, uh, of course, uh, increasing now the resource envelope. No, you're not increasing the resource envelope. You're, you're refinancing it. But what is the future impact of that deferment uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, our, our obligation and interest rates that we'll have to pay if we do. The expenditure item. Uh, hold on. It was supposed to be, it, but it's an expenditure item in that particular year. If you haven't uh, uh, dispensed it and that, and that money goes to another expenditure item. What would you call that? Not a reallocation. Now, if you don't call it a reallocation, you will definitely clarify. But what I'm trying to say is, if, hold on, if, for example, I have contractual obligations and a vote, a parliament vote, and uh, parliament has uh, negotiated that they may not pay that obligation this year, but then you use that money in another vote or in another expenditure item, wouldn't that turn amount to a reallocation? I just wanted you, Chair, to, to help me here. Uh, I think we appropriated about 1.5 trillion to go to reimburse Bank of Uganda. Chair, Honorable, Honorable Katesh is taking your attention. I want yes, us to... Sorry. Chair, as uh, the Finance Committee, we appropriated in this current financial 1.5 trillion. Then uh, the Ministry of Finance went ahead and did a reallocation without parliament approval to 3.5 trillion. This is a reimbursement to Bank of Uganda. And one of the justification was that Bank of Uganda is in need of money and finance has to look for this money to enable Bank of Uganda function quite well. So they went ahead and increased from the 1.5 we had appropriated to 3.5. Then down the road in the same financial now they are telling us they are reallocating. Chair, I think you can refer to the Finance Committee MPS that was approved by Parliament on Honorable page 21. Masaba, they have yes. told you clearly it was over budgeted. <laughs> so what are we laboring on? <laughs> we move to the next item. So when is uh, an item is over budgeted, you can make adjustments. Yes. No, Honorable Chair. Chair, you had the six seven science, technology, and innovation. 578.4 billion to support strategic pharmaceutical industrial investment under DEI Biopharma to enable them to complete the business production and ensure it comfortably meets its debt obligations and operational requirements. I would like to know, is this uh, a government company 
where, where we are sinking all this money, what, what, or it is another, another, an, another where we are seated. I, I, I just want to know uh, the, okay. the arrangement. This is a lot of money, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Shall go. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. And mine is a very simple one. I just needed a clarification from the minister on page six and on that issue of wage, pension, and gratuity as a source of uh, revenue that we expect to get money from. Honorable Chair, the issue of wage, pension, and gratuity is one of those that I don't expect an accountant to be coming here, as we've been discussing with the other agencies, as a supplementary and source of revenue. This just demonstrates that there is something very wrong in our budget allocation and efficiency. Now, when you come in May and you want a supplementary to pay wage, are these staff who are already there or they are going to recruit? And you've just... Re ask a question about recruitment plan. What recruit, recruitment can be done in two months and how will this money be absorbed? Or this is another way, like we've been interrogating here, of keeping money somewhere and then in the middle of the month, the, the financial year, we start saying money is available for wage. Mine is really on okay, timing Honourable and the issue of wage notes. Honourable colleagues, they were supposed to explain how that saving came, how they have, they, they have a, work, a recruitment plan which they have, they have to demonstrate where, and whether, as the people who supervise the budgeting, whether they take serious scrutiny of these plans, worker plans, recruitment plans, so that's what they are supposed to, to answer, but we started asking the same, so we are repeating the same questions. So I would like to request colleagues who allow the minister first to explain those issues. They may answer all what we want to ask so that we move to the next stage of votes. Honorable Minister. Facilitate the staff who are already in post. It is not for fresh recruitment. Mr. Chair, indeed, wage shouldn't be coming here as a supplementary because it is something which, uh, can, which can easily be known and which can easily be verified. However, we have had a challenge, and that's why the Auditor General came in. We wanted to know exactly how many employees does the government have because we were, the, the numbers were not agreeing. You look at the budget and the actual people in post, and you get a variance. And this variance uh, resulted into the audit, and the audit revealed a number of things. There were some areas where staff were not existent and were on the payroll. The payroll was being used on staff who were not in post. So you there say were those areas, Minister, you make clear. Say, mention those areas and flash that schedule. Eh? So, For example, Magona, can here you... there was A, B, C, D. Yes, Magona, so can you give us the, the detail? Total. Let me invite the director to give okay. us the detail. We, For example, we had duplicates. We had people getting the wrong uh, salaries. Yes, we also had cases where people who do not qualify to be on the payroll were actually on the payroll. So all these, all these issues were happening. And if, we, if you allow, because this report was actually submitted to Parliament, the audit report. But we can also do for you a summary of the findings of the audit so that you know the details of exactly what happened. Now, what we found, and we, we could have, would give you a spreadsheet which shows you that arising out of the audit, we had entities that had excess wage, 
because they had not recruited. And as you know, recruitment, especially in the local governments, sometimes is a problem. Uh, as I understand, in some cases, recruitment is deferred until you wait for a son or daughter to qualify <laughs> before you recruit. So we had so many of those cases that you have money provided for wage, but actually the recruitment has not happened. So those had excess, but also we had cases of shortfalls. But overall, arising from the audit, we had excess uh, in terms of wage bill of 294 billion. So now, those that required additional are the ones that we are dealing with. So in terms of wage, the shortfalls for those votes that don't have, for the staff in post, is 98 billion. And for pension and gratuity, the shortfall is 26. So we are drawing out of the saving of 294, 98 for wage, I mean for, yeah, for wage, and 26 for pension. So that these people who are in post are paid. Are paid. So this is not new recruitment. So colleagues, the, the argument is clear. People always have the figure. And it started from your office director. Director, I thank you for now waking up. You have been sending 20 tis, your wage is 500 million. And the word you use is protected. Without looking at the established field positions and what they plan to recruit. So that the money left remains idle, it's swept back. And that's why we shall go back to you to ask you for the money, which has always been coming back from wage. You have done good for uh, Kayunga, and, uh, Kayunga and the mission of, is it Havana? You have done good to disclose that returned money. So using, based on this argument, we are going to ask you for all the returned money. <laughs> you, must disclose, you must disclose all. Mr. Chair, we shall, okay. we shall do that. Honorable Max Ochai. Mr. Chair, I think is too much. Could the Minister of Finance sit down and consider establishing a mechanism that will plug this wage bill problem once and for all? I know it is possible. Mathematically, it can be done. And I believe with the technical expertise in the Minister of Finance, they should be able to do it. I think Honorable it Ochai, the mechanism is there. Elementary. Of 300 billion, they gave them only 18 billion. These people have not recruited. Chair, I, 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 I want an assurance from the minister that whatever he has brought here, he has the money and they are going to release, not like the supplementary of NIRA, which they have not helped them. They have not recruited people to do the, 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 the mass enrollment. And Chair, we are heading for an election and we need this data. The minister is asking for an additional 125.830 for wage, pension, and gratuity. Having cleared the, after the Auditor General verified the, the, the staff in the post throughout the whole country. I would expect a saving which has been demonstrated there and not an additional expenditure. So I'm perplexed that if we are saving, what is this money again for, uh, going to do? The 125.830. And then secondly, Honorable yes, Honorable what I'm saying is there was verification of the payroll. And the Auditor General found ghosts, very many ghosts, to the tune of 200, 200 billion? 94. Yes. 294. So, so is this money still going to pay ghosts, 125, going to pay some ghosts? Because if you have found ghosts to the tune of two, 200, eh? 200 billion, 
then you are now allocating part of this to what? To new votes. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Then the second point, Chair. Yeah, since you I'm should really be up. asking Honorable Tala. The question you should be asking is, what have you done to those? This money was too much somewhere paying ghosts. There were entities which needed this money, which have people working, but they had less money. That's why they say the 125 should go there okay, to solve the problem. I appreciate. Chair, yeah. since I'm already up, let me also talk. Who, who are playing with the money? They have now stopped sending that money there. Now they are saying, give us permission to solve where there is a problem. Thank That's you, Chairman. Why they are here. Thank you, Chairman. This is what I would definitely expect from that audit report. That vote. We are going to we are going to share a schedule by vote. Yes. Where we have extra. Yes. Excess and where we have a deficit. Yes. So if it is about the net saving. Because I said 294 is what was identified. We are going. We are requesting Parliament to approve 125. From the so the net saving in this case is 166 Correct. billion. 166. Yes, 166 after, net. After this 125. 125. Yes. You see, you see uh, the, 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 what you want is this. No, that's the, what we are saying is. Actually, I'm requesting, Chair, that this committee m should get the details of that audit report so that we really see before we, before we go says, anywhere. Honorable yeah. Lepe. Yeah, but what he's saying is because it is 294, there's nothing to show that it's actually not 294 is not, uh, not Honorable Lepe. Lepe. I'm very sure you're supposed to flash for us. Is where the wastage was. He's going to give us the votes where they discovered the wastage. Total to about 294. After that, he will give us, much as we had a wastage there, there is a need this side. So if we want the net saving, which is clearly, I said, if, if you want net, net, then you subtract and get the net saving. But the question is, is it a relevant figure? Yeah. The point is here is you have identified the wastage, but you don't go to sleep with that identification. You now solve where the problem is because salary wages is a right. It's only good that it would have been bad if they came to us and said there are people who are not getting a salary from a different votes, totally 125. But now we are borrowing this money. Oh, we are going to enter, collect more taxes to pay. But they have said, much as this problem is there, the opportunity is money was discovered here. Yes. That's where we are. Yes. So allow him to show us. That the director shows you in writing, item by item, vote by vote, and want to ask for, by close of business today, we should be able to provide this information to the okay. committee. Uh, then, Mr. Chair, Honorable Ruhunda's issue should not be grossed over. And I want to beg your indulgence that I give you my justification about the need to finance a day. And I want to read, I want to present it. Oh, thank you. Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Dispose that one. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Day that is under vote. Science and. Uh, this is science under science and, and tech. Vote 167. Mr. Chair, the justification is as follows. Government has made a strategic decision to partner with MS Day towards achieving large scale manufacturing. I would like to interrupt you. I want to interrupt you. Are you the accounting officer of that vote? I am justifying the budget. I am no, the minister no, just we are going the for budget. the detail. Where is the vote? Because you may... Peter Ourien. I'm the Undersecretary of Science, Technology and Innovation and the Accounting Officer Delegate. Thank you very much. Thank you. So he's around. So if a minister... ...scale manufacturing of pharmaceuticals in Uganda. This is geared towards achieving import substitution for pharmaceuticals import bill of more than US dollars 700 million annually. And to achieve 
public health security for our nation. The company has already made an investment of US dollars 500 million in establishing Africa's largest and state-of-the-art pharmaceutical plant. Phase one of this plant with production line for generic drugs, nutraceuticals, penicillin, cephalosporins, oncology drugs, serotherapy, gene therapy, cytokines, as well as support to laboratories in, is complete awaiting commissioning after DNA clearance. Kamban, you need, you need something properly written to Parliament, but you are just receiving cheats from your technical people. You read one, you throw it out, you pick another. So how will this Parliament justify, how will this committee justify to Parliament that uh, you are giving half a trillion shilling to a company, actually more than half, with no written information. Because here you've put one paragraph. So can I, the procedure issue I'm raising, Chair, is whether the Honorable Minister should not make a formal submission specifically about this company to this budget committee. Okay, colleagues, giving a detail of the supplementary, you can support it, but it's... Uh, I love this account, the initiators, the initiators of the supplementary. Chairman, this is so important this way, we are behind. Honorable Nambeshe. And um, it is a public-private partnership. My interest, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, we don't know. Private, I'm asking to know okay, now, Uganda's now. shareholding. Uh, now we have gone far. We want In a this... procedural matter, colleagues. Let's be orderly. Chair. We want a procedural matter that was raised. The author of the document. Then the whole document itself becomes suspicious. Let's agree in principle that the document, if it is inconsistent with what the minister believes in being drawn, honest and decent document fit for this All members. And uh, unfortunately, I have not seen the name of the person who signed on the document. And the minister stated that that is not his signature. So, is it well or is it procedural right for us to proceed with a document that is signed? And we do not know. Let the minister perhaps clarify who. Because, uh, our chair, chair the on that note, I would like to move a motion that uh, we do send away the minister and he comes back you with a proper procedural document. question. I, was, I wanted you to proceed with a procedural question. Then we'll go for a motion. Motion without notes is that we hold consideration of this fictitious document. Considering that this budget committee is faced with a situation it has never faced before. The minister brought an estimate of 60 trillion budget. He brought appropriation bill of 58 trillion. Uh, and he saw symbol for 53. Now we are first with a document he signed on each and every page. And he says just disregard one, disregard two, disregard three. Yet this document was laid before a parliament. And it can only be withdrawn and uh, an authentic one laid before a parliament. So the motion I move is that we hold consideration of this fictitious document until an authentic document has been laid before a parliament and properly referred to this committee. That is the motion and the rule requires that you put a question, not debate. We discuss... I, I'm guiding you want the minister to chair? <laughs> Colleagues, what, what, we, what we do, what we do, what we do, it's always, we said our committee's work method, one is to respect each other, number two is to discuss to arrive what is right, not who is right, so that we, we, we arrive at what helps our country, not to cause a paralysis, 
there are issues where we see something is not clear. We seek for clarity. Yes. And then we move. Jai, not just a matter of saying Jai, we go for tea at any time. No, we, we discuss and we arrive at good conclusions. Now, a matter has arisen. The supplementary schedule that was laid, and that was referred to this committee by parliament to process, is with us here. Now, at times, you know, in football, when they put pressure on you, you can even hit your own net. <laughs> and yet you don't intend. So, if you create too much pressure, so what we can do here, we had done for 10 minutes for the minister to reconcile his document and come back and explain to us. Thank you, we have some tea. <laughs> with the justifications. Therefore, colleagues and all technocrats, we take note the schedule two has a total of one trillion, one hundred and one billion, billion, ninety nine million. That's what we are processing. The six not pass because it lacked support documents, that lacked schedule. So when somebody attaches it here, attaches it here, it's just redundant. We ignore. So we proceed minus that part. If now finance is interested in it, then you bring a request in another schedule. Otherwise, if you wanted it handled here, you'd have included it in the schedule. Since it's not part of schedule two, we ignore and we proceed. So we go straight away. As Shabe, as finance ministry, I am hesitant. And I want to register that, that you carry me forcefully. Because, I mean, since we started this budget processing, every figure they bring does not communicate to itself. Every document they bring has issues. You remember the issues I raised about credibility of your information. So, Chairman, I don't want uh, to become stubborn, especially against your you ruling. Never, you are never stubborn. But kindly they record it that uh, I am being forcefully carried along. Um, and and uh, maybe in the report you will need to indicate that uh, I, I don't want to be as shabby as uh, the owner of Musas and his team. Really, this army of technical people, fire them. <laughs> that you come with uh, 20 people, competent at least by paper qualification. And everything they are doing is wrong. Everything they are doing is wrong. And then the chairman of the committee, because he doesn't want to paralyze government, he begins pleading on your behalf. Really, chairman, register my disappointment and know that uh, I am reluctant because you've made a ruling. We continue. And, and you know how high I, I, I regard you. You and Rugoro, you are very competent people. You are very competent people. I thought actually there would be a difference. But uh, I don't know whether by coincidence, actually things are, are worse than what they were before. You Very competent people went into that ministry. If you don't have staff, recruit, fire all of these ones, they go home. Okay, you have really done some of you. But the minister is allowing you to do your work. Then he comes when he knows my general servo. I've compiled all the information. Is giving you confidence, but whenever it comes, one time you brought a document where it was upside down. The functions are moving somewhere and want money to move there. Instead, the document was bringing money from where functions are going to where functions are living. Just embarrassing the minister. So if there is anybody who has a problem, I want to tell you a story. I traveled to, 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 they came there to work with you who are there. And then the security team, he told the security team that you people have come here to work. But if you feel you don't like me, you tell me to go away, but don't shoot me. <laughs> so he said, let's work. And these ministers have come in good spirit. But for you to start working like you want to, to make a minister again to audit documents, the documents should flow. Make the work of the minister easy. Now, 
you will force the minister to say, ah, I better look for my own private staff. There are others who have done so. Then you start crying, the minister has locked office. We are about to think those ones are also right now. Because when you accept that let's work with our people, since it's all our country, everybody has come, let's work. Then you put a minister. It, this is not the first time. Since this minister started appearing, he has suffered. Colleagues who have to sympathize with this minister. There is something wrong somewhere. Accounting officer. Mr. Accounting Officer. Tell us, what is, what's the problem? You are, you are the one who is the head of all. Uh, I have listened. I've uh, picked the concerns. And we are going to go back and do in-house work. Okay. And I, I commit that we shall do better. Thank you. Thank you. Please go and take. If somebody doesn't want, you ask him to ask for a transfer to another place if he's not comfortable there. If you are not paying allowances, please pay these people money. It may be a motivation problem, so go and sort it out. Colleagues, can we now proceed with... Dr. Robert Limlim. I'm director in the office of the prime minister responsible for the project here referred to as development response to displacement impact um, projects. In short, Dr. Deep. Chair, we have requested for 9.471 supplementary arising from the fact the project obtained an extension of six months from December up to June. The appropriation had been made up to December for this financial year. And so it was important for us to submit for appropriation of these uh, resources so that we can close the project well. The sources of funds is the World Bank grant we initially had 150 million grant uh, and 50 million credit, but this is for the grant of 150 million. The money comes from two major sources. One was the balances that we had Dr. not. Dr. Limlim. Yes. Where is it? What you are talking is where? Mr. Chairman, I have a soft copy of our Justification. Shall we file that? Yes, I would. I would, I would Shall we put that on our file? I'll present it, sir. You present it first. You should have now presented to the secretary such that. One. Signed one copy. Dr. Sengozi. I've okay. signed one copy. Okay. And I'm going to request. I came along with the, the coordinator of the project. Eh? I request that uh, he goes to read the statement and also provide more additional information. Mr. John Mary Chiwalabye. Distribute quickly. Members uh, through my accounting officer and honorary minister. Um, my name is John Mary Chiwalabye, the project coordinator for the Competitiveness and Enterprise Development Project, which is the government of Uganda. World Bank funded project and whose objective uh, is to facilitate uh, increased private sector investment in the tourism sector and strengthen the effectiveness of land administration system. So the project has two components. One component is under the Ministry of Lands. The other component for tourism is being coordinated under the Ministry of Finance, specifically under the PSFU, where I'm coming from. Uh, Chair, uh, this project during the financial 2023-2024 was allocated a sum of 39.01 billion. This figure was informed by the then money that we had received from the World Bank into our designated account. 
the funding for this project is in two forms. The first is investment project financing, where we receive advance uh, monies. The second is through meeting disbursement linked indicators. So there are conditionalities that were set for government to meet before funds could be disbursed. So at the time of budgeting, the, some of the disbursement conditions had not been fulfilled. But given that the project is multi-year, we continued uh, executing uh, the projects and activities. Now, um, as it stands, when we go to December, of course, we had fulfilled these disbursement conditions, and the World Bank had disbursed money into our designated account. But also, we had finalized on procurements for key uh, uh, civil work projects which we are supporting under the tourism sector. And these relate to uh, find, uh, civil works that are being undertaken under the Uganda Wildlife Research Training Institute in Kasese, uh, the Uganda Wildlife Education Center in Tebe, in, 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 in Tebe, what is formerly called the zoo, and then the school facilities under the Uganda Hotel Tourism Training Institute. So those activities, we concluded procurements, we already have contractors, we already have uh, certificates for the works that have been undertaken that actually need to be settled. So we wrote to the minister and the minister has communicated to parliament requesting that we are authorized and allocated these additional resources of 37.36 billion to enable us uh, finance. You have achieved increased investment, public sector investment in the, in the tourism sector. Because what you are talking about, all these uh, investments, Wildlife Research Institute, tourism training, all these ones are government uh, entities. We want, I want you to demonstrate how have you realized this objective? of having increased private sector investment because it's not uh, clear where, where, which private sector have, has benefited in this, in this uh, project. Do you have a list? This is what has led to the URSB, the opening of offices. Part of it has been used by URA. Part of this is digitalizing land and the component of the Ginger Training Institute, so that we have Wutali and all this. But this project should have been completed three years ago. Mm -hmm. But the problem has been Minister of Finance to release counterpart funding. And there are for colleagues, we want to compete in the East Africa. We need to support, especially this item of private sector foundation. That's one of the institutions that has been trying to ensure that Ginger Train Institute, if we don't approve this money, that hotel in Ginger will not be completed, and then these other places. Therefore, Chairman, I want to request my colleagues to look through this so that we approve. Otherwise, if we don't approve this item, it goes back to the World Bank, and we shall pay for it at the end of the okay, day. Thank I'm you. you. The hotel and tourism training institute in Ginger. My correction was that it was a beneficiary of another financing where the private sector foundation was, uh, uh, was involved. Am I right? Because if I'm not right, then I don't need to continue. You are right. So, so this f financing is different from the other one? It, it is one and the same. So we had, first of all, the parent project, which closed in 2019, and government requested for an additional financing, which was to scale up and effectively complete the activities that were started under the first credit. Because the reason I'm asking this, I interacted with the first financing. The very, very first financing was, actually money was eaten. Then another borrowing came, and I remember the Honorable Jira Descenda were pleading with us because we had refused to approve the second loan, because the other one, under Maggie Chigozi of Investment Authority and other people, they had actually eaten the money. Uh, honorable, that, that was again another project that, that had 
come That's why I'm system. saying that I am hesitant and I don't want to be told that no. this man has come from Luna just pass and we go. Because no. the first one was eaten. That the was sec- a different... The uh, second one, project. when we went there... Pardon? Okay, honorable. Let's this money and that sort of thing. You can read those three lines of justification. What I'm saying is... You know, time and again, we really advise MDS that when you come here, you really make something presentable that can really can be able to convince us. You stated rightfully what this is. Tell us why you, why you say you needed the, the additional money. Why? You should have stated why. Okay? Okay. And then, and then... Then you also, then, no, you didn't say, I think you, you just psychologically had it. <laughs> and then you tell us what the time frame for this will be. Because when we look at what, from the submission from Honorable Semuju, that there used to be a parent one, then another one came, now there's this. The thing is just recurring, unending. You should tell us even how long this other one, the time frame for this. Okay, fine. It's a project, thanks. Honorable Taira. The relevance of this money, if we can get conviction from the presenter, is to complete the project. It's been a long time since the place was closed for renovation, no activity ongoing. And uh, I entirely agree with Honorable Repair when we speak to the time frames of completion. Um, I'm surprised that the Honorable Katesh has not really felt the impact of the private sector in the involvement of this. These institutions, are even away from training, we are providing the cheapest accommodation that would attract so many people from different areas. Correct. And when they go to these communities, they eat from the local restaurants, use the local border borders. So the trickle-down effect is big. Correct. I want to agree that it's a relevant request. However, the time frame of completion, especially I'm speaking to the Tourism Training Institute in India because I've been there. Okay. There should be proper management of time. Thank okay. you. Okay. Is May. May. And in line with the financing agreement. So we are only going to be providing... May, which month? Which year? 2024. 20, oh, good. So the... Project will be given, has been given yes. additional time to effect payments for the activities that are already ongoing. So, Chair. Okay. It's chair, true. He has committed that they, by end of May they are completing. Yes. They, they are not going to start building their structure. The structure. Once they have chair, this money, they are going to do fittings and so on and commission the place. Agreed, Chair. And so, when is if they are seriously supervising and also if finance here? driving numbers because when the tourists come, of course, they go to visit uh, the UWEC, the Entebbe Zoo. The UWRTI, the one where we are training the labor force, and UHTTI where we are developing the labor force, has been a key constraint to the people who are interested in coming and investing in Uganda because they believe that they must come and bring workers from other countries to be hotel managers and go to work yes. in this industry. Yes. So the, the intervention that government is making under this project is supposed to further support the private sector in creating that a workforce that is going to work in the investments that they are doing. But also, the project has supported the development of the MICE policy. Now, the MICE policy is on meetings, incentives, and events. And I know that for the last financial year, we did attract a number of meetings that bring in a lot of people and also the people who enjoy the, the facilities that That's we already enough. provide. That, uh, Honorable Katesha Zanda, always need to, to boost for, for inflows of forex so i say we support this one those in favor i those in no aye. i serve it vote zero one zero things 66 billion and this is for implementation of the long-standing presidential directive on compensation of the ranchers under the government restructured ranches scheme we have uh,
Honorable Chair and members, we have a detailed report of all the ranches. They are about uh, there are 206 ranches. I want to I want to request that um, um, the chair okay, allow let's that, listen to him. Let that him later we lay on table on, the, the consultation report him. on ranches, which detailed all which details all the ranches, the 206, and the report hey, which order, was. colleagues. There seems to be another meeting behind. Dr. Lulume, yes, we know you're around. We shall <laughs> give you to. To compensation to ranchers who lost land to squatters as a result of the ranch restructuring scheme of 1990. This has been a long standing um, um, liability to government. Many ranchers went to court, and this money, is, most of it, is as a result of court awards. And that figure, which we have in the detailed report of 300. And the 72 billion was a reconciliation done between the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Minister of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, and the Attorney General's Chambers. Now, the 66 okay. is a just question. part of There's the. There's a question on that 66 Honorable Bambi. Vote 012. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, as a young lawyer, I was involved in this ranch restore caring scheme. Since the 90s, I was with the Sabalo and the You have continued compensating people endlessly. So it's not right for this meeting to approve this kind of expenditure unless you really provide the history and status. I, I don't agree with compensating people who are almost fictitious when there are other votes which actually need this kind of money. Even in law, if a claim goes beyond certain uh, period, it becomes time bad. Uh, yes, you cannot compensate people from the 90s up to now uh, uh, in billions. So really, Mr. Chair, Honorable Chair, I would really request that you should lay on table and for us to see the, 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 the people are supposed to be compensated and the, the justification. Because the colleague, what, personally I was involved in this order, scheme. Order, order. Let's other listen. Details. Our colleague is raising a very pertinent matter. He has, he cannot even give the history. So what is he giving? Chairman, are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Chairman, I have uh, interacted with this compensation as well. The beneficiaries actually went to court. Court agreed to their demand, but order, also order put colleagues, but also put interest. Isn't that right? What happened is that finance started negotiating with these ranchers. And I'm not saying you pay them, but I want you to have this information. Finance started negotiating with them and pleaded with them to waive the interest so they can get paid. The trouble as usually it is. Now land is under finance started fighting over this money. Who pays? Isn't that right? Eventually, <laughs> eventually, uh, and I have met some of the beneficiaries after going to court. <laughs> so eventually, I think uh, land uh, was able to win. And now the process, that's why that land man cannot explain. Because the whole process has been between the ranchers and the court and the Minister of Finance. At the time of uh, paying after the interest was waived, now Rand said we are the ones paying. So I don't want, okay. uh, I don't agree with uh, the Honorable Sibami that uh, you don't pay people who have gone to court and even have court orders to be paid. What we can do is to demand for more information about it. I want you to come every year. Today, 66. Another day, you come for 40. Then another year you come. If up to 20th Parliament, you will be coming. We want to track a accountant general. Accountant general is here. Is it, is, are we going anywhere like this? Wait, before we go to unforeseen, are we going to have a bottomless compensation? 
which means we must have something on record that an account is maintained. Accountant General, can you guide us? Account what is there? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair and members. Uh, this exercise was uh, still ongoing and uh, we needed to have them verified. And uh, I think what the officer or the accounting officer is saying now, they have been verified and now we need to be able to process them for payment. Have you, captured it? Have you captured it in your books of accounts? Uh, Chair, I would need to confirm, but when they are contingent liabilities, they are under the Ministry of Justice, and I know we have uh, a very long stock of contingent liabilities. But now, when we have a stock, like if this one came in, and we pay 66, are we closing? Don't we close? Chair, I want uh, the accounting officer to be the one to commit on that because they are the technical people. Okay, I might, so in my opinion, say we should close Ma after this. Madam Accountant General, Thank you, you should Chair. issue a statement to government. People should not take shortcuts. If there is a liability in our stock, that's why you introduced, uh, your, you, you, you did reforms in the Treasury and your reporting system included uh, disclosure of all assets and liabilities, isn't it? So don't sleep on your job. So you should have even raised an alarm here that I'm not aware of what he's talking about. That's how you help the country to make a point. So now, like even the person presenting, the what should be presenting is the flow. So that we take capture the stock, what weight is paid, we check. Not taking us for a ride every year, compensate, compensate, like it. Uh, so. uh, sure, I think... <laughs> I know and I've heard about this process and it has been ongoing and uh, we are now at a point. Okay, okay, account, okay. Mr. Jukot. Of the ranchers and what is owned by okay, who? Okay, can you step aside because... Oh, they are the same. Chair, Each one of we... them, the, the, the format, he thought is coming to talk of stories. We must see the flow. You go and prepare everything and come back when you are ready. Okay. To defend the supplementary for external financing. So that's the honor, that's Miss Dr. Mugunga. Yes. Who closed the rare <laughs> and it transferred the rare functions to the ministry. And later on, even the polls which rare had started placing have disappeared. <laughs> so we look, we look now he's in the water. So we look at him at that context. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair, for that uh, additional introduction. <laughs> Indeed, I was the accounting officer at the Ministry of Energy. At the time, Cabinet decided that Raya should go to the Ministry of Energy. I was only doing my function to implement Cabinet decisions. Thank you very much. So for this particular one, I would like to invite John Magezi. Picked here... Uh, Key outcomes is to increase the area under irrigation and therefore we are developing five irrigation schemes uh, Wadelai uh, in Pakwash district, Mobuku in Kasese district, Ngenge in Kwen district, uh, Tochi uh, in Oyam district and Doho in Butaleja district. All the other four schemes are completed except Wadelai irrigation scheme in Pakwash district. And uh, this is because the contractor for Wadelai irrigation scheme, COIL, uh, limited uh, first financial constraints and moved very slowly. So at the time this project was extended by African Development Bank, uh, which was in June 2023, the budgeting process had been completed. We had the resources, but we could not uh, move on with uh, uh, processing payments for remaining activities, including the major one being uh, completing Wadelai Irrigation Scheme project. Dysfunctional, 
And um, I think uh, wild, wildlife in form of birds had taken charge of the tanks. There's no flowing water. And that's the district. The district says the project was parachuted from Ministry of Water. We do not know because we are not involved. Okay. I can need the committee to come and see me to see a ghost project on which billions were spent. Under the same ministry, uh, Honorable Chair, these are good projects, but they should be justified. I would like to encourage the committee to interest itself physically, not to sit in these uh, walls and pass money over projects that are non-existent and therefore will constitute negative expenditures, Honorable Chair. I have a vivid okay. example, even now, in Bukoma and Simbi, Thank it's you. there, abandoned. Let's hear from us. Under the uh, signature or a letter signed by the relevant accounting officer. But I take exception because the Honorable Tala is saying, actually, the submission by the, was done by the accounting officer. Uh, so it probably could have been that uh, when we were compiling, this could have been omitted. But he also said, he wrote, so I think, and I remember I discussed with him that much as he had written, for it to be in the supplementary, it had to be in a letter signed by the accounting officer. But now he's saying they did it. So, but that is the principle. For, for any supplementary to be honored, it has to be requested by the accounting officer. And as I said, most of them were handled under Schedule 1. And the ones we are handling now are based on the recent requests. And we can provide evidence that actually these requests so are recent. So some were handled under Schedule 1. Yes. So we need to check with our accounting officers whether they wrote. About the unspent funds, of course now government has, uh, we have two, two sides to it. For the missions abroad, we actually release and transfer money to their bank accounts. And when we talk about unspent funds being returned, from the missions abroad, it is physical money that actually comes and goes to the consolidated fund. For central government and for the local governments, that is where we are under the Treasury Single Account Dispensation. So there, when we talk about unspent, that's where we are trying uh, these days to clarify that when you say unspent, we are talking about unspent warrants. In other words, we have given them expenditure limits, but uh, just before they could commit to invoices and then we pay, probably the financial year has ended or they did not even get up to that point. So for such entities, the money has even not left the consolidated fund. But for the missions abroad, it actually leaves and goes to their bank accounts and then it has to come back. It's paid out. The system has to first check whether we actually had credit on that account. We can do anything else. The system is configured to allow you to, to avail to the accounting office expenditure limits based on their budgets and uh, your cash flow programming. But at the end of the day, if you have not actually put physical money in the consolidated fund, then an invoice will not be paid. So that's uh, the intent of uh, so that which we normally say. Excuse me, Mr. No, no, Chairman. No. So let's say, colleagues, we shall get another. Million is actually money re police received as non tax revenue accruing from compensation by UNRWA as part of uh, the uh, project affected persons and property for the construction of the Kampala flyover project, specifically at Ch Chibuli, Nsambia Link, and Kasawe Station. Yes. Uh, this money was paid by UNRWA to the consolidated fund as compensation after a process of valuation. And the 
Police requested this money from Minister of Finance as supplementary provision because it had not been in the budget. And this money is intended to construct alternative accommodation for the persons affected by this project. I'm sure you have seen press reports about families from Zambia Barks who have been affected by this. So we committed through contracting and currently we have unpaid in, uh, bills from contractors who have put up alternative accommodation across the country for us to move the families of affected personnel. Okay. Thank you. Colleagues, that seems to be very clear. It's, this money was not in the budget of Uganda police because at the beginning of the financial year, we did not anticipate that UNRWA would want to use part of the land and therefore it wasn't there. Secondly, the issue of land owned by Wasajja Balaba, UNRWA compensates for project affected persons and property. So police has personnel who are compensated. And the computations are based on that. The compensation here, police has interest on the land. We don't own land, but we have interest because we have our personnel and our structures on the land for which we were compensated. So the, the ownership here, and you can see the amount of money relates only to personnel and the, not the, the, the land itself. That is between now UNRWA and the owner of the land. So why do you put it there? Now you are composited so that you can shift the people. The people from there. Your officers. Yes. By constructing for them somewhere, even even if, even if it meant buying another land, you are resettling your people, isn't it so? That's the issue. Oh, no. Now, why why is this urgency thing coming? Because they talked of the flyover. Oh, okay, they can help you. Look at the Malaysian. Yes. It means Uganda police force has an used to occupy land that is registered in the names of Wasajawarawa in Kajansi. Yes. So which means Uganda police force was a Chivanja owner, a for all bona fide occupant. Yes. So UNRWA acquired this land, but in acquiring it must have compensated the Chivanja owner, Uganda police to live, and also paid the land owner. So the money here, which the police received as a Chivanja owner, is the one they are seeking for a supplementary budget. Have oh. I interrupted you, sir? Thank yeah. you very much, Honorable. Now, there is no buying of land. Yet here they are saying the purpose is to buy land. In fact, they are dealing not with people who are affected. I'm saying this because uh, one of the policemen I know was affected, they are looking for money to relocate. But what I see here is fencing. So money is given purposely to acquire land and build, as he said, for, but the breakdown does not speak to what he has said. Is the final page, there are three pages. Yes, okay, it says something buying, else. Okay, are you also? The greater massacre. And the, we all often encounter landlords who want to be compensated. And how this happens is that communities in, in the local governments offer police land. And the, when it comes to ownership, they start saying, you know, the son of the person who donated this land was in the UK, he's now back, he has this and that. So land acquisition and construction go hand in hand. Because we no longer want to construct where we don't have ownership. That's the thing. The and we question, actually given the, the breakdown. Is, you see it's from your own statements. Committed in Masaka where we have implemented the sub-county model. Are you purchasing land there? We are not we are compensating people where we are constructing the sub-county model in Greater Masaka. <laughs> okay. Colleagues, I think we take it as it you 
compelled if you don't have a unipo to, to buy, literally buy a plot of land and construct something there for yourself. In the document, I have seen the compensation of police personnel. Are there particular people, police officers or men and women, whose plots they had paid for in the barracks? Because it does happen and they is aware, the accounting officer is aware. Are they part of the compensation? Because those who were settled in barracks actually pay for the plot to build there, and their houses were demolished. Are they part of the compensation? Yeah. The documentation, the signed copy should be delivered to the chair, but they can also project. The Catholic Diocese of Nebi and the Church of Uganda Anglican Diocese of Renzori, Bunyoro Kitara, It may be clear to you, but the PS is transferred by the Ministry of Gender, Labor, and Social Development. Oh, I didn't introduce myself. Honorable Chair, I'm Agre David Chibenge, yes. Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Gender, Labor, and Social Development, and, and Accounting Officer. And Honorable Chair, Mother's Day is commemorated every year. It's a public holiday declared by government on the 3rd of June. And every year, government supports uh, both the Catholics, the Anglicans, in organizing uh, this day. Funds are normally transmitted through the Minister of Gender to the dioceses that are normally in charge of organizing. And we've done this every year. The only challenge we have is that these funds are never provided within the budget. And every year, we keep on coming back. We now have a cabinet decision, a directive to Minister of Finance, to make sure these funds are provided within the budget going forward. Director Budget, are you listening? You are listening. So the three billion that has been provided is again on a directive yes. of His Excellency the President. They had directed and cabinet that we provide four billion. I think Minister of Finance could only mobilize three, which is a good uh, contribution we appreciate. Uh, the Minister of Tourism chairs the National Organizing Committee and the Director Basile is here with us. So they had made proposals in terms of how to break down the three billion. Uh, the new dimension that has come in right from last year is that the Muslim faith also have matters that they want to celebrate. Last year, they got a small contribution. I think it was only 10 million. But in the proposal, that the National Organizing Committee, in the proposal that has been made, Order. Proceed. Honorable Chair, in the proposal that has been made, uh, although the cabinet directive did not include them, uh, the National Organizing Committee, which brings together all of them, has considered that directive and made proposals which are indicated there. So the three billion breakdown is as has been highlighted. I think we're all seeing it there, number one to eight. <laughs> Colleagues, this is a clear. Uh, the PS has really given the budget allocation and is saying them, them. First of all, when you say them, them, that's derogatory. Yeah. Giving, yeah, when you say them, 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 we are talking about who are they? Yes, so that is one. It's just an observation. Two, the breakdown, uh, item three, support to the Muslim site. The request is 1.8. Only 200 is provided. For the rest, one to two, you can see substantially something is given. So what is the criteria of determining what, what to give, where, how, uh, 
You see, I just want that explanation, not from Nakut, because Nakut is okay. the treasurer of NRM. Honorable not Subambi. a PS. Honorable Subambi, we have got to you. Honorable Don. Uh, yeah, I prefer to stand because I'm near the ground. <laughs> yes. Mr. Chairman, whereas I should be excited, I am, I am Catholic. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, number six, Chira Municipality. You realize that one, two, three, and even four are largely conservative. Chira Municipality is the epicenter. Whether we are talking about the religious pilgrimage, whether we are talking about the tourism, whether we are talking about hosting visitors, whatever you want to name it, this is the core of where this activity is going to happen. How do we place all these allocations on the consumptive part? And we don't place resources in developing the infrastructure, the beauty, and the amiability of Chira municipality, which is the point of attraction. Honorable Rico. It, yes. Let, let the camera. This document. The directive of the president was that give the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church two billion each. That's the directive. Page page one, page two, on page two. The document of the he, he has presented. Um, you can see the if you go to the final figures there, the one that are displayed, the president said give them two two each. The Catholic had requested one point seven. The president said give them two. <laughs> the Anglican had requested for two point one. See, this is a joke. The Muslims had requested for one point eight. Last year we gave money, and I have no problem. But I think there must be justification when you are spending taxpayers' money. Do we have a budget to which we are contributing? Or oh, it is just a give them. And then when you, you look at the first two, the Catholic and the Protestant, money is given to the dioceses that are organizing. And this is very serious. You need to pay attention to this chairman. When it comes to the Muslims, you are giving money to Spirimu Council. I go to that mosque. First of all, it was donated by a person who is dead now. The owner of the mosque wanted that mosque constructed as also part of the Namugongo um, matters. This Spirimu Council, where you want to send money, they took the title. When we got taxed to come and construct the mosque, they said we want proof of ownership of land. But Supreme Council refused to release the land. Even the 10 million you gave them was just for eating. If you must give them money, and I don't care whether it is one, they asked for 1.8, please, this money should go to Namugongo Mosque, the same way it is going to Nebi. To Nebi and Midwestern Uganda, it must not go anywhere. It must go to, because you, you go there, there is nothing. I have been to that mosque many times. So these ones, you give money here, they may not even know what is there. So please, if you must give, and I may not quarrel the amount, after all, where they have asked 1.7, you are saying give two. Maybe you add us uh, like 500, because it's just given. <laughs> Okay, and then we go and construct that mosque because uh, the quarrel is that the president contributed money to construct part of the infrastructure to the Catholic Church. When it came to ours, they are giving us money, 10 million for Pirao. Please want that mosque constructed as part of the Namugongo infrastructure. And 500 million, since you are just giving the demand, please give us 500, you will come and see that the mosque is constructed. Okay. Previous years. I've said this money was for Matters Day. And uh, the Muslim faith, 
made a case last year, starting last year. I am okay, coming to that point. Yes. So they made a case last year that they too have matters in that same area. Yes. And because that was the first time they were raising the issue and they've not been commemorating Matters Day, they have previously not been beneficiaries of what government has been providing to support the preparation for Matters Day. So this year, the National Organizing Committee, in recognition of the fact that yes, it's true, the Muslims have matters too, they have a place in Namgongo, the assumption was that these resources should go towards their commemoration. But in their letter, they broadened it because they made the submission to the National Organizing Committee where they are talking of commemorating 50 years of the Muslim Supreme Council, and they are talking of their event starting from 10th. So I think that's the point of departure, and the National Organizing Committee felt that to contribute, they will not contribute to the event, because the event of commemoration of 50 years of Muslim Supreme Council requires the 1.8 you are seeing. Yes. So they said, we are giving only 200 for purposes of commemoration of Matters Day, not for the Muslim Supreme Council. Yes. And you are paying to the, to the Muslim, of the course. Muslim Center at Namgongo. We'll because they are, they are trying to compare with the government. Billion, a million in Sam. Museven never gamma by billion, a biddy. Avasavie Kanzizim Rugan, Avasava million, Urukumi Muru Sam, Museven never gamma by Wimkumi biddy. Baba Nying, Oxinga Kuziba Savie. Our poetess and Vasava million, and Kumi biddy much Kumi, never gamma by way, million in Kumi biddy. Our Siram, the Indian Puna Mugongo. Etakari na mungu wangu kuri omuzikiti. Terina wa ilikuwa atagani na mubaji. Na hiba luwa e, ya liyesa wa sende ya lete wa mubaji. Mubaji na alimba no kulima. Ntia wa sila ambagina utani kukuza matazi. Defa wa sila amte tukuza matazi de. Nge dini. Tuko la vintu virara. Era. E, na mungu wangu kumuzikiti yoko ngenze. Kuro na semba yose kajia omusambi wa mpire. Yali hatu yami yoko kubo omuzikiti yoko ranji. Netuwa agaro guzi imba. Nga tufu ni abatake bage na guzi manga muendi nzenga se muju. E chapa chomu zikite chomu baje ya chile mela. Sima nyewe ya chisinga mubanka. Chimaringa government. Bale kila wakule vintu nga balalu. Olina wakusawa miyo ni luku muru saamu. Nomu wanku mebili. Mubaje na wakusawa sene. Nti agenda kola vikuju kubi wa kujukila spiru mukansu. Nge tandikiwa idi amin 1972. Nomu letea kulisti yawe na mugongu. Nge government yenu wakatonda alitusasira di. Oli akusabi enti tuwa gala kukuza vikujuko vya Uganda Spirit Mumu Council ya tandikiwa Amin 1972. Numuleti ya kulistia na mungongo matters. Edawa numbagambi wa PS. Ngeenda kuwa wandiki andema minister. Fe abasiramu tetukuza matters ide. Ne bevali wataba na dini na abasiramu mbawata. Mukuwa jukira umuzikiti ogo. Che tuwa gala wa guzimbe. Walo nesumeria primary wa guzimbe burunji. Nesi kuwanga mubaji na wasaji yawe sente kuziri ya angawali ila mbanya gawa hawafa. Kakati yu msaji, nori ya nesene mbanya gawa hawafu. Supplementary ya wade ya kuwa magora sente. Nenga wamanyi mbaga tezibu lakua mperekeze. Ngawe wana ajile tanga ya magora, eja kula vikabubi. Nema mchika mune mperekeze zizi mwere kedaji hafu nesene. Echiwani kwa government chere semu kwa miti chigamba, nti hato nejeno. Saba oleleza wa government. Wewe saba wole reze wa umuabu zikumateka, acha soma biwandi kwa ebi kwa tagana ku kureuli amagora. Mwandi kwa ebi government buluwege ndo kute kasiende mu businessi yao, ote kujua mwe miga, wabu zeka tu ni miga mwe kateba mani neto akawa magora billioni chiku mwa ana mutano, kati ano ni ndara magoro ayagala tu billioni bili, no mwa kujia mukunjia kula beranga akomio, afusenga atiaka. Afusenga rubowa. Kati, bano 
abazo kuno na sendi watu mwe watu mwe msebe ni alagiri anga wala weze na mungu ya gaba we bilio ni bili government wewe ya galo kuzimba ekole lolie dagara mungu gena kuteka mtu liyo ni bili magola yata demu sente meka bietu waba gamba muatiaka muatiaka sugar factory tu wakateka mtu bilio ni bina chinana mutano ye amina ya kateka mtu bilio ni chinana ni hati factory ajina mwe bitundu nsambu government ya ina mwe bitundu ndo uzanga makumi ya abili o wabili yoni vina chinana kati ya kina kongere nda la vina ainamu 20% amino wa bili yoni chinana ainamu percentage 60 kati chewe unia kubantua bali mga government museven yetaka kuyamba kubati ngojeko kule vintu vya mtimo mubi akulamu nebiye chikade 